Hi there, my name is Martin and today I'm going to walk you through my latest demo called Fatal Justice. I've composed that track for the drum resynthesizer Backbone, Steinberg's brand new Swiss knife if you want. I try to compose a trailer-like piece of music that is synth-based but still grounded on real instruments and that's where Backbone comes in, as a fast and intuitive tool not only for drums. Let's have a closer look at the session. I've divided the project into two worlds, the backbone world down here and the non-backbone world up above. Of course, I only did that to make the backbone sounds appear much more underworldly than the non-backbone ones. No, actually, of course, I did that to show you which parts are done with backbone so that you can easily see at any time how much of backbone you have within the piece. Let's now have a first listen to the track. While I was gathering ideas for this piece, I thought about the best way of showing Backbone's capabilities via music. But I also thought about how Backbone might change my way of making music. As we all know, music changes from day to day, right? But some trends survive the years and sometimes decades. One example in epic music is this percussion and drumming we all know from these production music tracks that endlessly try to copy and paste this epic drum sound. I remember the days when I was sitting there and listening to the iconic tracks of epic music repeatedly trying to decode how this specific sound might have been created. And as we all know too, very often in media music we must rely on temp tracks to deliver in time, but the magic things happen when people let us composers try something or experiment with new sounds. And what I've often tried throughout the years was to tweak the drum sound of these big emotional epic tracks to get a cleaner, still very touching vibe to the rhythm part. And exactly that I've tried here with Backbone. And it was a lot of fun. Let me show you that in the first place. You can see here that I've colored all the drum instances of Backbone in orange within the group tracks down here. You see that I've mainly used toms and frame drums. 
while I've divided the toms and the deep tom and the, and the deep toms. Ocean drum, snare, hi hat, and shaker are only additions. Let me quickly skip through the different drum sounds. Before we do that, I deactivate the drum hall down here because I'm going to talk about that later. So let's go through the different sounds. Let's have a closer look at the frame drums first. I wanted the drums to sound post-apocalyptic. In the sense of how could a reverberation of humanity sound? Thinking of reverberation of a frame drum, like there are no frame drums anymore, but there are still people left who know how magically frame drums sounded back in the good old days. The first frame drum instance is the real thing. There are only two little things happening, but you can easily see what kind of magic you can do within Backbone in nearly no time. Everyone who ever tried to record a frame drum knows that there is this annoying tonal aspect of the drum. You want all the punch and raw power of the instrument, but the tonality mostly doesn't match the pitch of your track. So you start filtering out the annoying frequencies. But as I'm always saying, by filtering out, you take away many aspects of the magic happening within the instrument. What Backbone simply does via Decompose is dividing the tonal and the noise part of the sample. That's it. But that's what we want as creatives, right? So this preset simply does that. The noise part is the main aspect of the sound and the tonal part is dialed down to minus 12 dB. The magic is still there, but not in an annoying sense. The other cool thing taking place in this preset is the uh, pan key follow within the amp section here. Set to 128, it makes the signal walk from high pitches on the right side to low pitches on the left side of the stereo field. What I did then was to take this original organic frame drum sound and vary it through resynthesis. You can see that I've muted the tonal part. That's here and here. I've muted the tonal part within the two other instances of the frame drums. What I did was simply to mangle the noise part with the resynthesis feature. The resynthesis mode in both layers is noise. And the main difference is that layer C is darker than B. But the quality of the sample is completely different. You can still hear the original through, but it comes to a totally different life form it in a way transforms a new image and the only button you need to write therefore are formant and speed let's just compare the two layers again layer b and c you can hear it's much darker uh, and i love this thing and that that you get uh, out of the 
speed knob here on the speed dialer. And now let me combine all of the three sounds together. Now let's have a look at the main part here. All of the frame drums play the same, which is actually the case with layers, but you can see that B and C are opposite in pitch. With this trick, the stereo field comes to life, and Backbone makes all of these things so musical and ready to play with that you can create layers and combinations in nearly no time. But you can also spend hours and hours playing around with the samples and resynthesis. For me, it's the best playground concept I've seen in a long time. Let's have a look at the toms now. I've divided them into two mid and three low layers. The two mid layers are quite simple. I've created one sound that's higher with a crispier aspect and a deeper one with more bottom to it. With these two layers, I made heavy use of the pitch. Let's have a listen. I think it sounds quite funny while soloed, but when um, within the groove, it sounds quite interesting and gives an element you can't get out of real instruments. So that was uh, kind of what I, what I meant in the first place when I was talking about um, how to get this different drum sound compared to the normal drum sound, so to speak, that uh, is that, that we all know coming from the static place within an epic context. The low toms are for deep accents within the groove. As you can see, they are only emphasizing those beats with the most impact. That's why the second half of the main part sounds even bigger, because more beats are emphasized, but the heavy traffic still happens in the higher ranges. Together with the toms. All the drums together. Nice. And it works so far. Now you might understand why I've spoken earlier of the hi-hat and shaker being an addition to the groove. Let's add them to the drums. See how hi-hat and shaker enrich the second half of the main part. The shaker goes up in pitch and velocity while the hi-hat adds more notes. Let's now have a closer look at the additional room. The room is essential for the emotive impact of the percussion part as a whole. I have chosen a real space and no artificial ambience with algorithmic reverb stuff. I wanted this kind of cathedral hall, but without noticing the cathedral part of the hall. The wooden church sounds a lot better than the stone ones to my ears for this particular use. I have left the ER to tail amount at 50% because the initial samples sound quite dry, otherwise I won't hear um, a certain kind of connection between the dry sound and the tail. Listen to the complete main part 
and I'll switch the room of the drums on and off to show you the importance of the room aspect. last aspect of the drum section I want to show you the beginning and the end of the track the first statement of the drums is quite outstanding and indeed very strange it shows what only a resynthesized drum can play while still having the feel of listening to a real one The snare was designed just for this little appearance, but it was totally worth the time because the whole next section makes a lot more sense with this little statement. Together with the frame drums B, it sounds like a group of drums playing. In the next section, the two mid tom layers come in together with a deep tom. It's the classical approach of holding back your forces till the very moment you need them most. At the end of the track, I used a slightly different combination to create the effect uh, of a conclusion that still leaves some of the main questions unanswered. The next thing I wanted to show you is the bass. The bass is built of three different sounds and one of them comes out of Backbone and is an out-of-the-box preset. I found that preset quite at the beginning of my explorational work with Backbone and felt that it had some of the vibe I wanted to have for this track. So I built everything around this little sound but used it only for the end of the phrase. Disadvantage of the sound is that reasonably the tempo changes with a pitch, so I chose the D for matching the tempo of the track. Around this sound I designed the main bass layer, bass dark, up here. I've created this sound in Retrolog, a synth I like very much because of its simple and intuitive design. The onboard effects are very inspiring and have a nice emotional quality, especially for tracks like this. The additional layer I've done with Pad Shop, as you can see here. Two main layers of the bass are very roomy and have a long tail. The backbone bass gives a very dry comment to the line and completes it every second bar. The magic happens not only within the backbone bass but with a combination of the deep and dark layer. As you can see, I've put an EQ on the main layer to filter out the low end 
and to emphasize the band at about 1800 Hz. Every time the deep layer comes in, the low cut filter is activated. The second band comes in when the main part starts to help the bass being more recognizable while still not overwhelming the bass range of the frequency band. The combination of the two layers in the intro is only marginal, but hear that in comparison. First, I deactivate the automation on bass dark and mute the deep one. Now with the original combination. You more feel than hear the difference, but it helps a lot to sublimely drive the tension forward while first emphasizing every second downbeat, then every every downbeat before we have a quarter and then, a, then an eighth movement within the main part. Let's listen to this build up again. The last key element of this track is the hook synth. And here as well, Backbone plays a little but an enriching role too. First, I wanted to create a synth sound, resample it and play the whole thing via Backbone. But after I found my favorite sound, I kicked that idea. By having a look at the hook synth instance, you might easily understand why. As you can see above, uh, the starting point for this sound was the Starfish arpeggiator preset. So I've prepared the original version here to show you what is left of the original. Here's what I did with it. Or a bit deeper. It's the reverb that caught me with this one. But that's what I love with presets. They give you some kind of starting point when you have an idea in your head, but not yet a solution how to get there. And while listening to this beautiful and for this track perfect reverb tale, you understand why I didn't go back to Backbone to mangle the sound there, because it already was perfect. During the main part, I've layered the hook synth with a backbone instance of a simple mallet. Let's have a look at that. The mallet gives the synth more of a real life attack, but I didn't want this attack to be noticed. So I mixed it all the way down until I felt it not noticeable, but feelable. Let's have a listen to both. Now I'm dialing the mallet all the way up and play back the thing.
One last little aspect I wanted to mention is the pad at the beginning and the transitions. These little additions are so important for tracks like these because they polish the main musical elements. They lift them up, they carry emotions forward and help making impacts really work. You've never really noticed the pad, right? It is there, but you don't hear it. You just hear it when it's gone. Have a look at the sample page of Backbone here and you see how easy it is to make your own pads out of your own material. The resynthesis does an extra job too. See this nice feature of loop back and forth. You can, um, it's alternating and you can put it on or off as you like. And that's how easy it is to work with Backbone that way for pads too. Maybe the most important transition of this track is just before the impact of the main part here. The intro stops abruptly and leads into a big break, kind of a general pause, a halt of breath. That makes some room for the transition to do its work, to lay the ground for the main part. I mute it for you and you see what it does. Stunning what the absence of this little helper does to the track. Of course, I've, I've mixed the impact down so so it's very very harsh without the, the the drone whoosh here. But now again with transition. While heading to the end of this walkthrough video, I want to mention all of these extremely cool presets of cinematic risers, stinges, transitions, whooshes, and all the other stuff. It's ready to use. I've only tweaked some of them, as you saw, in a way of muting and leveling the different layers, but the general sound is untouched. These onboard sounds alone are worth purchasing Backbone, but thinking about what you can do with all the different layers that are coming alongside Backbone is just amazing. If all that is not enough, you can sample your own stuff. Let's just see how many different layers are here. Layers and layers and layers and layers, and you can combinate them in any way you want and then start making your own sounds with own samples. One very last thing, I almost forgot about it, the grand. And there, the upright piano player position. Hear how magically it works here. Beautiful. And we all know these sounds, but they are not that easy to create. You need a really cool layer at the beginning. I wanted to show you that without hole. Okay, that's an upright piano. 
But as you can hear, the room does the real job. As I'm always saying, room is the carrier for emotion very often. Let's have a look at that. Filtering out some parts of the signal helps the reverb to shine through. We don't need all this waste down here, but we want to emphasize some part of the frequency band, as you can see here. And that helps a lot for the reverb. In this case, I took the algorithmic version. Just have a look how I tweaked it. Very important early reflection tail amount here set up to 100% because I already have within the player position a little bit of early reflection. So the early reflections are battling. You don't hear that in the first place while just playing the piano, but you hear it in the mix. It doesn't translate so well. That's how I got this really beautiful piano sound here. And it really works very well within the mix. It's been a lot of fun working with Backbone on this track and I hope you've enjoyed the ride through it. I'm looking forward to meeting you all again in one of my next videos. Stay tuned and continue being an ambassador of whatever music you make. Bye bye!